Let's simplify carotid sinus hypersensitivity. This is a really high yield thing that shows up on exams all the time, and I think it's worth doing a somewhat deeper dive to understand the anatomy and physiology. So if you look at an anatomical picture, the internal carotid artery and external carotid artery meet at a bifurcation known as the carotid sinus. The carotid sinus contains baroreceptors, the prefix baro meaning pressure. So these are literally pressure receptors. And as that name implies, the function of the carotid sinus baroreceptors are to control the equilibrium of blood pressure and heart rate. And so this essentially functions as a feedback loop based on the literal stretch and pressure applied at the carotid sinus. There's a feedback mechanism that sends signals to the heart and controls cardiac output. So if there's too much stretch, meaning too much pressure, the idea would be to lower cardiac output by activating the parasympathetic nervous system. That's what shows up on exams most often as it relates to carotid sinus hypersensitivity, but the opposite is also true. If the baroreceptor senses that there's not enough stretch, there's not enough pressure, the feedback mechanism will activate alternatively the sympathetic nervous system to increase cardiac output. So this is just a brief snippet, but what is really important to understand for exams is the physiology and pathophysiology, depending on you know, which angle you're taking it from. So let's start with how this works. So pressure, pressure or stretch is applied at the carotid sinus baroreceptor. And when that pressure or that stretch is sensed, afferent with an A, afferent glossopharyngeal nerve signaling occurs. So this is really important to know that it's cranial nerve nine, glossopharyngeal, and it's an afferent signal. Now keep in mind that the carotid sinus nerve is a branch of the glossopharyngeal nerve and that's what is f literally innervating the carotid sinus. So on your exam, the answer would be correct if you see glossopharyngeal nerve and that's most often what you'll see. That's gonna be your afferent signal. Now that's going to travel to the solitary nucleus of the medulla and then you're going to get efferent signals through the vagus nerve. So afferent with an A was cranial nerve nine, efferent with an E, cranial nerve 10. Afferent is gloss, efferent is vagus. That's really important to understand, so just keep that in mind. That's important for USMLE and complex. Now, depending on whether we're sensing too much stretch or not enough stretch, you have differing activation of either the sympathetic or parasympathetic nervous system. So let's start with this example. So if there is not enough stretch, meaning blood pressure was low or there wasn't enough stretch determined at the pressure receptor in the carotid sinus, then you would activate the sympathetic nervous system. Of course, when you activate the sympathetic nervous system, you get increased cardiac output. So you're going to see things on your exam like hypertension, tachycardia, etc. Alternatively, if the receptors were sensing too much stretch, meaning blood pressure was too high, so that carotid sinus was stretching out, pressure was being applied to it, then you would want to tamp down at the heart, right? You would want to lower cardiac output. You would want to activate the parasympathetic nervous system. And then what would you see? Well, of course, you would see hypotension and bradycardia. So what's important to know from this slide is that it all depends on whether there's too much pressure and stretch or not enough pressure and stretch. And then depending on which of those two you have, you will have differing activation of either sympathetic nervous system or parasympathetic nervous system. Now, if you're taking USMLE or Comlex and you're like, dude, dirty, what do I need to know? Stop with this theoretical physiology. Just tell me, what do I need to know? Well, the answer is, this is what they're gonna give you. They're going to give you a situation in which there is too much pressure applied at the carotid sinus which causes cranial nerve nine, glossopharyngeal afferent signals going to the solitary nucleus, efferent vagus signals coming out, causing activation of the parasympathetic nervous system, lowering cardiac output, causing hypotension and bradycardia. And how they're going to give this to you is in a you know semi-accidental fashion. And what do I mean by semi-accidental? You're going to have somebody who has carotid sinus hypersensitivity, which means that yes, we all have carotid sinuses and we all have those baroreceptors, but some of them are a little hypersensitive. As the name implies, carotid 
sinus hypersensitivity means that the signals are a little bit overactive whenever the carotid sinus recognizes any stretch or any pressure. And so what this will look like most often on your exam is somebody will either be shaving or tying a tie or putting on a bow tie, right? They're doing something around their neck and they're accidentally going to apply too much pressure at the carotid sinus baroreceptors. And because their baroreceptors are hypersensitive, they are going to experience lightheadedness. And on your exam, it's usually going to be a syncopal episode. So if you're sitting there taking your exam and you're, you're like, okay, they're telling me this guy is shaving and then all of a sudden he faints and he's on the floor. They're asking, what is the mechanism? What is the pathophysiology? And this is what the answer is, right? They, they accidentally put pressure on their carotid sinus, which was hypersensitive, and it went down this pathway and activated the parasympathetic nervous system. And when it did that, their blood pressure dropped so low that they syncopized. And that's the answer. That's carotid sinus hypersensitivity. So for USMLE and Comlex, it's really important to know that glossopharyngeal nerve is your afferent signal, meaning it's the signal that you start with in this cascade of events. And so the way that I've historically memorized this is using the mnemonic that if you gloss over shaving, you might faint. And what this reminds me is gloss for glossopharyngeal and shaving, applying that pressure at the carotid sinus that's hypersensitive. So if you gloss over and you shave too quickly without put, you know, paying close attention to what you're doing, you might faint. And how this helps me on exams is that gloss, meaning glossopharyngeal nerve, that is the one that comes first. That's going to be my afferent signal that activates the parasympathetic nervous system. So this has been a brief talk about carotid sinus hypersensitivity. High yield, quick summary and quick takeaway here. On your exam, someone's going to be putting on a bow tie, tying a tie, shaving their neck, doing something around their neck, and then they're going to faint. If the test asks you what the afferent first signal is, it's from the glossopharyngeal nerve. If they ask you what the efferent second signal is, it's at the vagus nerve. If they ask you where those nerves are coming into contact and what's kind of coordinating all of this, the answer is the solitary nucleus of the medulla. And just know that we all have carotid sinuses. Some of them just are a little bit hypersensitive.